Hello and welcome back to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and nonprofit leaders and how they strive to make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia. And I'm looking forward to talking with our guest today, who is Cameo King, founder of Grit, Glam, and Guts. Hey, Cameo, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You got the name right, and that's all I need. <laughs> okay, the shortest podcast ever. That's all we needed to do. That's our accomplishment for today. That's great. No, but obviously, the name of the show is Mission Control, so we have to start out with learning about your mission. What is the mission of Great Glam and Guts? So the mission of Great Glam and Guts is we serve teens ages 12 to 17 our goal is to equip them with educational opportunities, the civic learning opportunities, but at the heart of it, it is increasing their self-identity, increasing their self-awareness, and recognizing and engaging in the power of their voice. And before I, I go on to the next thing, but how did you come up with the name? Where does the name come from? So, um, you know, we're an organization. We focus on girls. And I think that oftentimes the work of girls, it gets pigeonholed into um, cute, fluffy sparkles and, 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 and pink. And, and mind you, I, I like pink. I like sparkles. But I think there's so much more to the development of young girls and young women and so i felt like those three words grit like strength um glam is the beauty of our experiences and the compassion we have guts is the like literally the gusto to go after your dreams and be who you are and so i was intentional about ensuring that people understood that teen girls are all of these things and more because we develop into young women who need these characteristics to navigate navigate life. Would you would you say that the description of the or grit glam guts also describes you and your journey? Um I would definitely say yes. I would definitely say yes. And it's interesting. No one has ever asked me that. <laughs> it's interesting because I think that, um, you know, how you present, and this goes for anyone, how you present, you know, people make assumptions about the type of person you are. Um, and I think I come off as very bright, very warm, very loving. And I think that those are true characteristics of me. And I think that is how people encounter me. But there's also a very tough side of me. Um, there is a also a truth telling side of me. There's also strength that I had to dig deep for uh, that I know makes me the woman that I am today and continues to push me to the places that I'm called to be. Um, so definitely, yes, I'm multidimensional. And I understand that our teens and our young ladies are, are multidimensional as well. In that, and we're going to dive into that multidimensionality, if that's a word. It is now, if it's not a word, of, of what what you've put out there because you've been very uh forward facing um that i've noticed you know and and going and researching you and in your background i mean let you're you're also speaking to my heart quite the storyteller as uh you know you started your career in in journalism being forward focused and i you know so talk a little bit about about your your dabbling in the at at, at the news station and, and getting started in that in that world yeah so one of my um uh dreams has always been to i think be the voice of the voiceless um and it's funny i was corrected by another journal journalist there, no one does not not have a voice so stop saying that <laughs> stop <laughs> stop saying that you're no one savior but um i understood the power <laughs> I understood the power of media. I understood the power of the mic 
um, to enact social change, to create conversations. And so that's where I fell in love with it. And so um, I actually started in undergrad. I went to Howard University. Um, HU will typically respond. You know, if you if you go if you if you are a Howard University mm -hmm. alum. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I studied broadcast journalism there, and I had multiple internships, and I also worked in radio. And so the transition, my first job out of college, I was actually a producer at a CBS affiliate uh, in Lansing, Michigan, and. Uh, that world taught me more about people and I think less about journalism and maybe journalism is about people, right? There's an art asking questions. There's an art to storytelling. There's a craft behind it. Uh, there's an art to researching, but um, meeting people on their best days and on their worst days, you get to learn a lot about how people show up, what they need, and simply humanity. Um, and so I enjoyed, and in a fast-paced environment, right? Um, and oftentimes in an environment where you can't get, can't get it wrong, right? Because you have 30 seconds, 60 seconds, a minute and a half to provide what could be crucial information, what could be um, information that has ripped the family apart, right? Um, and you, you simply can't get it wrong and you have to handle it with care. And I enjoyed that about journalism. Um, and if I'm honest, I didn't care for, a part of me didn't care for the structure at the time, it changed a little bit, but the structure of local news stations where the, the, the phrase was, if it bleeds, it leads. And so when we say that, that means bad news come first bad news comes first we get excited about bad news we get excited about someone getting cut shot whatever um and that is the leading story of the day and um uh, i didn't i didn't that didn't sit well with me um it put me in a position of being able to change like the reason why i got into the got into the field in the first place and i also worked in radio i was able to tell more creative long form stories um uh, using just different sounds, the power of uh, the power of the power of voice, and so my my role in in my experience in journalism, I think it prepared me for a lot because being able to communicate those stories is is how we connect, is how we relate, um, and keeping humanity centered in all of that is is key when you're building or doing anything. Well, and, you know, just to just to tag on to that, I mean, you know, with your ability to tell long form stories, stories about people con conversing with people and doing it in an audio um, setting, you created a podcast that you still do, you know, before, well, I shouldn't say before, but before the podcast, way before the podcast, boom, you had this started, what, what? What was your thought process in that? Was it just the ability to just tell tell stories like on your on your time under your pacing? I mean, what was your what was your thought process in developing a podcast when nobody most people were like, "What's a podcast?" Mm -hmm. Podcasting before podcasting, popular, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> before was the everyday term. Um, I desire like that that common thread I talked about acting change and having these conversations, these transformative conversations. That's something that's just inside of me. Something like I, I it lights a fire under me, and um, I couldn't do it at the radio station. So I was working at the radio station as a reporter, um, and I, despite the stories that I would uncover and the conversations I would have, and understanding that there was a story behind a story. And this could really be instead of a, a a minute and a half story. This could really be a good, you know, three minute, five minute story. Or let's bring this person in to have this conversation. The radio station was like, nah, you know, we're not we're not interested in that type of work. Um, that's not what brings, you know, that's not what keeps the lights on necessarily. Um, that's not the structure we know. And so I said, well, okay, I'll try it. On, I'll try it on my own. And so a part of that quest was to have these deeper 
conversations that really pulled back the layers of individuals when we're oftentimes met with a single layer because maybe how we encounter someone or because of something we experience. And that was the that was the initial thought. I think I was actually at the radio station. And I think um, I was either reading a magazine or uh, someone, there was another show playing. I think Oprah, and she said, if you don't see it, create it. And so that was the, that, that was the, okay, well, that, there's your challenge. <laughs> Go do it. And I should like uh, bring it forward. What is the podcast about? Just so the, if the audience doesn't know, just what, what is the podcast about? Definitely. The podcast is the Good Girl Podcast. It's a podcast of confessions specifically from women. Um, and when I think of a confession um, and angle women, and there are often things in life that tell us what being a good woman is. And um, things are that helpful, right? <laughs> and so every week we bring a woman on that is telling a truth about an experience she had that very much pushes back on this idea of what it means to be good, what it means to be a good woman. Um, and the hope is that through these podcasts, folks that listen, first their eyes are opened to the possibilities of how you can show up as your the best expression of yourself, but also that you're healed. Because I think when we adhere to some of these um, very rigid definitions of womanhood, we don't get the opportunity to really live our best life. And so my hope is through these confessions, through these conversations, that uh, women really begin to free themselves. That's amazing. And so, no, like I said, you started this a while ago, I think about 2008, 2009, about that time, or is that, mm -hmm. is that right? And you've been interviewing a woman a week since then? Yes, for the most part. So we take a break. So we typically, um, so because I've been doing this so long. So I think for the first, the first time, and I may think it now some of my first interviews, but nonetheless, because you grow, yeah, you expect, right. yeah. <laughs> and you grow. But, um, and they're not all women. Uh, we have men on, we have uh, 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 men that obviously are connected. All of us are connected to women. We came from mm -hmm. a woman. But um, uh, that are uh, where their topics impact women very much so. Uh, but I would say, in short, yes. Um, and so we moved to seasons where we would do a fall and a spring season, and we would take the summer off because of the other things I'm sure we'll get to that I do. Um, and specifically this past year, though, we took uh, we took a this will be a year now that I've taken off of the podcast because of all the other things that are exploding and happening um, right now in my life. I do have a desire to get back on there, but it's about finding the time. You know, Paul, mm -hmm. you know that it takes work in developing a podcast, getting mm -hmm. guests, getting guests to respond, cameo. Mm -hmm. getting <laughs> guests to respond. No, no comment. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, and then even just uh, the marketing. Oh, because mm -hmm. you don't want to do just a good show and it goes nowhere, right? Right. Um, so all those, all those components and 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 what that would would look like for me and for the podcast. That's that's just incredible because you're right. You know, you it is a lot of work and it's a lot. Of, even though folks might, might may think that all oh, you know, you're doing is sitting down and talking with somebody on on camera or uh, on a microphone or whatever, it's it's not that. There's a lot of like work that goes. Um, uh, in between and before and after and all that stuff. But now I want to like have you let's let's shift a little bit um, outside of maybe your your broadcast realm and talk a little bit about what you've done um, when it came when it came to like working with other nonprofits or working with other folks on really um, developing content and uh, you know, developing their voice um, online and, you know, or if they have to be in care on camera, let's talk about your experience there and, 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 and doing, and, you know, gathering that information. I think I actually really love that work and that's work that I haven't been as intentional about, about assisting individuals and finding voice 
um, online, connecting it with their mission and also with marketing. Because, you know, nowadays it wasn't as popular, but you have a brand, whether you know it or you're not, or you don't. Mm-hmm. And your brand is essentially your personality. It's how people, how people view you. Um, right. In the world. So my brand may be, I know Cameo is associated with girls. She also um, has a specific focus um, on black girls and centering girls. Um, but Cameo is very inclusive. That may be, that may be my brand and it evolves over time. But what I like the most um, in that com- connects back to communication and which is so interesting during this time, it's just what you communicate and how you communicate it, right? Um, we live in a time where extreme communication gets attention um, and it gets the clicks and it gets the shares. But a part of my work, when I've worked with individuals, I've worked with elected officials, um, is telling them since how to control the space, how to control the interview and how to communicate your message and stay, and stay on task. And also, which is very easy in this world, um, Attempting to manage your emotions. And I think that can be challenging. Like Mike is in your face and maybe you hold a um, high position and where your words have deep implications um, on lives of hundreds, thousands, and millions of people. But also the everyday person who something may be happening um, in social media, pop culture, or in your neighborhood. And people are very quick to hop on social media and make a statement. Um, a statement that is emotionally charged, but that lacks depth, a statement that doesn't take in consideration um, everyone who be involved in something, um, and a statement that, again, moves you and moves people towards your mission. And I think that can happen in any space. I've seen it done really well. Um, I've seen it done through memes, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, when something happens in pop culture and people may use their meme to promote their restaurant, right? Um, and that's essentially your brand, your mission, connecting it to to what's happening now. So I do really do, I mean, I really do love that work, but when we have time to really sit down, have deeper conversations and giving people the pause before they decide to express themselves on the world wide web where millions and thousands of people exist and you can sincerely impact someone's life. Do you have like an example or a memory of one of those moments that was really successful that you were able to like uh, facilitate where you had to, you know, create this, you know, help this person create this story, um, uh, you know, to illustrate their mission correctly and accurately? So I worked with an um, individual, they shall remain nameless, but I work with the individual and I also always look at threats, right? If you're an entity, if you're a person, if you're a business, what are your what are your threats? Meaning what is honestly like the worst thing that can happen to you? What rumors about mm-hmm. you? And so you do things to somewhat mitigate that. And so let me, so if someone, so if you're if you're a billionaire, right? And the one of the threats is that you don't care about the communities you build your facilities in, right? And so part of that mitigation is every community that you go into, make sure you are essentially doing good, not charity work, but that you're building and that you're integrating. You don't necessarily have to tell that story, right? Mm-hmm. You let right. people tell that story. And then when, when that threat when that threat bubbles up, you have all this ammo. <laughs> you have all this ammo to say, hey, actually, we've been doing this for the past five years. We just don't promote it. Right. Um, and so that happened and it allowed that entity, that company to look like a like like a, a good person. I'm not saying that the entity or company was, but it's like, no, we've been doing this work. We don't have to beat our chest and show up on social media. But since you want to bring it up, here it is. That's wild. Um, and it's all about controlling that narrative. And, you know, it's not like you're making things up. You're controlling the narrative so that if somebody tries to like, yeah, this, 
it's wild. It's, uh, you know, the world of communication is so, so flexible and uh, unbelievable. So all and that, I, oh, I'm sorry. And just one more, thing, one more thing I want to add, but I also always tell individuals, especially in this space, just to be honest, just like to integrity. Like, so if you lied, if you messed up, admit it and leave it alone. And, and that's the it. And, and, and show like how you'll take this walk back. Um, Cause I think people are forgiving if you are sincere. And if you are, when I say sincere, you're really gonna work towards being a better human or not doing this again or rectifying the situation. Um, because I would like to believe we all know that we will eventually do something we're not proud of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we're human. We're going to fall and we are going to fail, but it it's how you recover from that is what people will remember. Um, yeah. And Or if you don't recover, they'll remember that as well. Uh, so taking all that, you know, you're taking your storytelling into uh, on camera broadcasting. You're taking your storytelling from to behind the camera and helping other folks find their voice. Let's talk about how you found the voice of grit, glam, guts. How did that start? How did you go from all these organizations that you knew about, were a part of, learn what you learned from and create uh, grit, glam, guts, and why? Was this another situation where you were like, uh, with the Oprah, if you, if you don't see it, create it is that another one of these aspects or how did this come about i know that was like a long convoluted way to ask a question but there we are so i i um so yeah I, i'll tell the origin story of great glam and guts and yeah. so actually um <laughs> we were i was working another nonprofit, one love global whose focus was working with um families and lansing specifically urban areas and doing um, work with uh, children ages zero to 21. I say zero, we're talking about mothers who have children um, in the womb. And um, a lot of that was grassroots um, community efforts. A lot of that was learning how to do community organizing, um, learning how to respect the community and get the community involved. And so um, and another component of that was doing work with youth. And um, so I did a lot of youth work, youth programming, and the executive director, Angela Austin, she had asked me um, to do some work specifically with girls. And I wasn't excited about it. I wasn't, if I'm honest. So I was like, no, we're cool. Let's do work with, you know, all kids. This is fun. Um, and, uh, and she says, no, I really, I really want you to do this. I said, great. Kind of said like that, great. <laughs> and um, and so I, because I was somewhat pushing it off, I think she knew she she had come back to me and asked me how it was going. I hadn't planned anything, I hadn't researched anything, and so I'm somewhat scrambling. And one day she came in and she said, "Cameo, before you leave today, I need to talk to you. Um, I have something to share with you." I said, "Great," and I'm leaving out of the building, right? leaving out of the building and she says cameo because i felt it like I, I, I felt it like you need to go back and talk to angela but i just didn't want to and so i'm leaving out and she says cameo why didn't you come and talk to me i'm like i don't know you know that's my response <laughs> and then she says to me she's a woman of faith of god and she says cameo god told me that this work with girls isn't for me but it's for you and so i said okay but in my head, I say, God didn't tell me that. So, <laughs> um, and so I'm laughing at about it now, laughing about it now, because here we are 11 years later, and I absolutely love the work of Great Glam and Guts. Um, so one of our first, um, one of the first things we did was we put on a teen conference for girls. And I wanted it to be as authentic as possible for young ladies um, and really give them opportunity to get questions answered, um, have conversations that, you know, you wanted to have as a team, but maybe didn't have the space to have or maybe didn't have the resources to get involved and get connected. And there was also a very intentional 
component of it, of addressing the summer slump, right? We did it over the summer and oftentimes students in underserved areas, they don't have access to summer programming, whether it's a camp because it's high tuition or um, it's transportation or just quality programming. And so we want to be intentional about that, about having it over the summer, having other organizations that served these girls um, present too. So it wasn't just about great glam and guts. It was about what the resources are in the community that can serve you. So that's where we, that's where we started. I loved it. And I saw the deep need for it. Um, I just continued to do the work. And the more I did the work, the more I realized how my unique approach of working with girls uh, was something that we needed. Um, in terms of simply, like, I just, I, this is how I say it. Like, I love the babies, right? I love, <laughs> I, I, and, and like resources and support and a listening ear and they need a lot of other things but I think knowing that they have a community behind them that is prepared to equip them with tools for them to navigate life is a part of the brand of 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 GBG of Great Glamming Cuts. So I mean you've done this for quite a while. Um you've got all you know you did the conference do you do the conference still or is that still known as uh the what you do at the capitol is that or nope. are those two separate things two separate things and so uh the team conference we've done consistently um and then out of the team conference we began to do chapters or a level of academic programming so essentially we had a maybe eight to ten week a curriculum that was implemented in schools. And we were at Eastern for a while, and I think we were at the Lansing Art Gallery, and we also did one at the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Flint. Um, and that was, it was kind of like our pilot season, right? Or we piloted a few, and it went really well. And so now we have like official chapters. We have one at uh, Waverly Middle School, we have one um, in East Lansing, and we have a Lansing Citywide chapter, and hopefully we'll be bringing on another chapter soon. Um, and in these chapters, you know, they go through our principles about self-awareness, self-identity, and recognizing and engaging in the power of your voice. And each chapter is tasked with creating a community project that embodies those characteristics. And so not only are you developing these skills, not only are you um, increasing those three components, but you're also developing skills that connect with community, right? That teaches you how to work in tandem with other girls in your community and valuing other skill sets and potentially developing some skill set that you didn't know and, and also being heavily invested in something and saying, wow, I created something positive in my community that's impactful not only to me, but to other people. Um, and we have, we have the chapters, and then we have a week-long summer residential camp. Um, and that's fun. Uh, that's at MSU as well. That's where we bring anywhere between 10 to 15 girls to MSU to take collegiate-level courses from professors, right? Specifically professors that look like them. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I want to say this and make this clear. We are an inclusive organization, but we do center the experiences of Black girls. Um, and we do that intentionally because a lot of the world doesn't center our experiences. A quick example is if I go to Rite Aid or Walgreens, we have a section for our hair, right? A section where the entire there's an entire row for individuals with straight hair or non-curly hair. Um, and that's just a, a minor, a minor example of just the unique experiences Black girls or Black women will face. But anyway, that was a, going down a deep, <laughs> deep, deep hole to explain that. Nope. Um, and so it's a week-long camp again at Michigan State University, girls from all across the state. It's it's heavily, uh, even though it's heavily populated by Lansing students, um, and uh, and they take you to courses and self-expression. They have educational opportunities, obviously, civic engagement activities, and then they just have fun, right? You're meeting girls that you've never met before on a college campus and just excited, right? Um, and so that, and then the thing you're talking about, Paul, so we did um, Black Girl Day of Play. Yes. Fun, right? Fun. Mm -hmm. And so we did do that in place of our conference coming out of COVID because of COVID, right? Coming out of the pandemic. Right. I didn't want people in a inside together. I said, let's do something outside. But Black Girl Day of Play 
it holds a special place in my heart when I when the idea came to me, I just didn't know really how deep it was and how essential it was. And so Black Girl Day, play it's a weekend now, but it's really a day for Black women and girls to uh, experience joy and center their joy. And Paul, I'm sure you know the history of this country, right? Uh, black people, let alone Black women, we haven't been allowed to center our joy. It's been about work. It's been about being a mom. It's been about, you know, uh, uh, carrying the weight of the community. It's a, about a lot of these things that do not equate to centering your joy. And so creating a day where you feel safe, creating a day where um, your wellness is what we're focused on, um, emotional wellness, physical wellness, is at the center of Black Girl Day of Play weekend. And so for two years, we did it at the Capitol. Um, then this, two years we did it at the Capitol. And then the most recent year uh, at Adal Riverfront Park. And so excited to see that, to see thousands of women to come out and those who cher cherish Black women. Um, so yeah. That it's it's incredible. It's a, it's such an incredible feat and incredible testament uh, to all the work that you are doing, have done, and seeing it culminate like that. It's amazing. Um, and so, speaking of carrying the burden of community, uh, what do you do to like escape escape from all of all the things that you're doing just to just to decompress a little bit. What what is something that Cameo is like, this is my time, this is what I'm gonna do. It's interesting. I wanted to run and hide right now. <laughs> Cause I think that's a consistent battle. That's a consistent battle I have because I feel like the work is never ending. Mm -hmm. But um a part of a part of it, it switches in 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 the months of May, June and April because that's when things pick up and, and it, it just changes. And so you have to make adjustments. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, but one thing I do is making sure I do have at least one day throughout the week where I don't, don't allow myself to feel obligated to work. Meaning I can do whatever I want to do, whether it's sit in my room and look at the ceiling, whether it is frolic and play with my friends. Um, I think that is a part of the, the rest, a part of the restoration of it. Um, and also knowing that that's where creativity breathes and lives when I am well rested. Um, there have been times when I think I, I just I couldn't put two sentences together because I was so tired and I'm irritable and I, you know, you got a little chip on your shoulder and it's, it's nothing really wrong. It's just, you just need to go to sleep and probably go get you a cupcake or something, you know? <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. It, and so that's a that's a part of it. It's just being intentional, and I'm trying to become more intentional about even resting throughout the day, if that makes sense. And so I know we work eight hours a day, and sometimes we just don't get up and just don't take a breath, take a walk. Um, and so being intentional about that, about that as well. And I also take the month of um, July off. So as soon as June done. July, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, you deserve that. You deserve to replenish that energy because we need you right back at it, doing it for those <laughs> young ladies all over again. So how? Oh, we're at the end of our time, but what is the best way for folks to get a hold of you and learn more about what you're up to and and all that stuff? Definitely. And so, um. Always our website, and we're on all social. No, we're not on all social media. We're on enough social media. But our yeah. website is yeah. grit g r i t glam g l a m guts dot org g u t s. Um, you can also find more information about Black Girl Day of Play at blackgirldayofplay dot com. Um, we are on Instagram and we are mm -hmm. on Facebook. Um, and our email contact information we're accessible. We respond except for July, but we respond. <laughs> Um, we respond and, and you're more than, uh, welcome to be a part of and sign up and be a part of our events. So, yeah, that's incredible. 
That's excellent. Thank you very much for spending a little bit of time and learning about you, your mission and your goals. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you all again for taking some time to listen to our program. Don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple of weeks. And if there is someone you know of that you would like to hear about with their journey, please email us at missioncontrol at unidus.com. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform and leave us a review. Thank you again. And we'll see you next time in the control center. Boom.